Lindsay, thank you for being with me today. Sure. Um, if you could just start off maybe by telling all of us um, where you work and the, the folks that you serve every day. Okay. Um, I'm the nurse coordinator at Mass General Hospital for adult cystic fibrosis patients. Um, there, we see patients in an outpatient clinic, but we also act much like their primary cares because their primary cares don't know how to take care of their cystic fibrosis. So when they get admitted to the hospital, we also round on them every day. Um, so we're pretty close with our patients. It's a small group. We have about 300 patients. And uh, obviously they're, they were a little um, shaken by the whole COVID-19. I'm sure. And can you give us just like a layman's understanding of what cystic fibrosis is? Sure. So it's a genetic disorder, basically where um, within your DNA, your cells don't function correctly. And so they don't produce enough sodium. And so everything inside your body and your lungs and your gut, your reproductive system is dry. So normally you have these moist lungs and you can cough things out and you don't get sick. Cystic fibrosis patients can't. It gets stuck in there get stuck in their lungs, stuck in their gut, mm. et cetera. So um, it impacts their pancreas and how it functions. It usually stops functioning. So you usually have to have eat pancreatic enzymes with anything they eat for them to get any nourishment out of what they eat. Um, so that's kind of basically it. Most people yeah. think it's just the lungs, but it's a lot more than that. Right, right. But a lot of us think about lungs when we think about cystic fibrosis and knowing that coronavirus impacts the lungs so much. How, how are your patients faring under the pandemic and how are they emotionally too? The, originally, they're very scared. They're, they're kind of scared their whole lives because they can, they're much more susceptible to getting germs um, and then developing a bad illness. So initially, they were very scared. How is this going to change things for me? What do I need to do differently? What do I need to do more? Um, you know, should I just stay at home? Should my spouse not work? Um, all sorts of concerns. And luckily, um, they for years have done respiratory hygiene, wearing masks when they're out in public, hand washing. Um, they've known that for years. They've known the six foot rule for years. Um, and so they were kind of ahead of the game in a sense. This was not something new to them to do. Um, and they've kind of actually chuckled about it a little bit that now people that used to look at them funny are walking around with masks and they feel better about that. <laughs> um, but it still scares them, the idea of getting it. Um, I will say that worldwide so far, as of a report yesterday, there are only 40 patients globally that have cystic fibrosis that got COVID-19. Wow. To me, that's, that's to them doing a really good job of what they've always done. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's, that's good news for them and it's good news for our patients. That said, they still get their cystic fibrosis illnesses. They're exacerbations. They need to be treated at home or they need to be admitted to the hospital all through this. Mm -hmm. And that was a little bit hard to um, traverse for both them and us as their caretakers. I'm sure. Yeah. And knowing, you know, at MGH, you probably have a, are have growing numbers of folks coming in with COVID-19. Is there fear um, from your patients to come in for their regular care at the hospital? Right. Originally, we were still seeing people, even though we had to um, up our protective equipment a little more. Normally, we see our cystic fibrosis patients with gowns and gloves on. Um, we did not. We had to add masks and eye protective gear. But for the last two to three weeks, we've only done virtual visits with them, um, which makes it a little harder because we can't, you know, listen to their lungs and, and test what their breathing function is like. Um, but it's, it's worked. Um, I'd say we're treating a few more patients at home that we might have wanted to come in. And the patients that we've admitted, that's probably been the hardest because we never send them when we normally admit patients, we never send them to the emergency room or to the admitting office because there are two areas that are just full of sick people. Mm -hmm. And so they usually get admitted right to a floor. 
And we couldn't do that. We had to send them the emergency room. It was the only way to get them a rapid COVID test. Mm. And, and that was scary for them because mm -hmm. they see emergency rooms as a place that they'll get very sick. Wow. Yeah. So as, um, as your church family, folks who are supporting you and the work that you do, and um, how can we be praying for you and for your patients? Um, what are things for us to keep in mind as we lift you and, and them in prayers? I think their anxiety is what I'd ask you to pray for. Um, one of the harder things has been dealing with some of the patients who have had spouses who have become COVID-19 positive mm. and they've had to quarantine. And so the patients have had to find another place to be. Mm. And it's very hard. There was a young couple that they have no family up here. Their family's in New Jersey and they're very poor. And her husband was really sick and she has cystic fibrosis and she didn't want to leave him as sick as he was. Um, so it was hard to convince her of that. Um, we share a lot of tears, mm -hmm. our patients, the doctors, me and the patients. Um, and it was also hard in the system to find a place for her to stay. There's a lot of places for, um, homeless people to go or COVID, you know, positive people to go, but there wasn't a place for my patient to go because she couldn't be exposed. We called the mayor's line. We called the governor's line. We called everywhere trying to get help and no one had help. We just had to keep calling motels and hotels till we found a place for her. Um, so I would say, you know, just their anxiety in those situations is just to pray for them for that. We have two women who are pregnant, and so they're even more anxious. Um, mm -hmm. So just to, to continue to pray for them as you always do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we will definitely be doing that in worship and also just continuing on. Um, and, you know, we can imagine the anxiety that they're feeling, but also praying that everybody <clears throat> has a place to go. I think that's something maybe we haven't thought about is, um, is your patients, as you said, who may not be positive themselves, but are in homes with positive people, where are they to go? And so we can just be praying for everybody to find safe shelter right now. Yeah, and I would ask you to pray for the, the real, what I think are the real frontline staff, the ICU mm -hmm. staff um, and the emergency room staff. Um, mm -hmm. They're just doing things that they signed on to do, but, but they're at the extreme level of what they signed on to do. And just the stories that we hear in the hospital every day, the ICU um, put on a huge wedding for one patient because um, he really wanted to get married and he died happily five days later. Wow. So they'll feel it mm -hmm. at some point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So prayers for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We will definitely lift them up in prayer. And it's amazing to hear stories like that coming out of, how much love and support the doctors and nurses are providing on those floors. Um, but we know the emotional toll they must be taking. Yeah, it, I think they are, they're all holding strong right now. It will be when this is over mm -hmm. that I think people need to remember that. Right. For them. Yeah. And, and remember all the staff in those areas, you know, the housekeepers that have to clean all the rooms and people have to bring supplies into there. It's, it's everybody. Absolutely. Well, we will be praying for them today. Thank you for lifting them up and thank you for sharing uh, with all of us a little bit about your work um, as you care for folks with cystic fibrosis um, and care for them body, mind, and spirit. Um, so we will be um, praying for you and praying for them um, this day and going forward. So thank you so much, Lindsay. Thank you. Yeah.